On this episode, we talk about the serpents in the desert, and the big question of the day is, are you a serpent? Shalom everyone and welcome to another episode of Torah Tuesday. We are on episode 13 and super excited to be with you again on another episode. Always uh, inviting your questions and your comments. Feel free um, to make comments or ask questions in the comment boxes below on Facebook, on YouTube. You can use hashtag Torah Tuesday and uh, join in on the conversation in future episodes. So this week uh, we are discussing Parashat Chukat. Parashat Chukat, uh, which is the 39th reading of the Torah, and Chukat is statute, Chukim are the statutes. So as a very quick side note, remember there are different types of commandments in the scriptures. Uh, we have Chukim, we have Mishpatim, we have the Mitzvot, right? And they're just all different kinds. So it's not just one general law or one general type of law or instructions, there are different types in our scriptures. And so this week we're going to uh, focus in a lot going on in this week's Torah portion. Um, this week's portion we have the death of Aaron. We have the death of Miriam. We have basically the beginning of the death of Moses as he hears that he will not enter into the land. We have uh, him hitting the rock instead of speaking to the rock. We have the red heifer. And there are so many years of the journey of Israel um, just in this week's Torah portion. There's so much to discuss. Um, in this week's Torah portion, and I just really want to, um, I guess, kind of hone in and focus on uh, one area of it in particular, which is the serpent. I want to talk about this bronze serpent um, in the desert, and uh, I think it's an amazing teaching for us today, for us to understand what this teaching uh, of the serpent is really about. And there's multiple teachings about the serpent, but I'm just going to focus on one aspect of that servant, serpent, because I think it's important um, and very relevant, especially uh, for us today in this day and age with everything that's going on around us, uh, with the things that are happening in our society uh, here, even in the United States, and, and all of these just opinions and, and positions of people. And uh, so I'd like to, to talk about that. And so I want to start us off actually, though, just to um, tie in uh, Matthew chapter 12. Um, so we're going to be in Numbers chapter 21. Uh, but I'd like to begin with... Uh, Matthew chapter 12, starting in verse 33, 12, 33. And Messiah is uh, uh, speaking here, and um, you know, and he, he looks at, uh, at these uh, Pharisees and the scribes that are in front of him, and, and he, he looks at the, the whole circumstances of what's happening around him, and he says, either, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad, and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For from the mouth, for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man brings out his good treasure, what is good, and the evil man brings out his evil treasure, what is evil. And so I want to talk about this statement of brood of vipers and what it means to be a brood of vipers. And a brood is an offspring. Um, it's a grouping, it's a group of a type of species of something, an animal or something of that sort. And I know a lot of times when I've read this, I've heard it and interpreted it with certain uh, punctuation marks and with certain tone. And many times when we read the scriptures, um, we put in our own tone, we put it in our own interpretation of how it would have sounded like or how we would have said those statements and we say it and read it um, as if maybe that is exactly how um, the Messiah or whoever the speaker at the time is, is saying it in. Um, however, you know, there's not these punctuation marks in the text originally. Um, and we, we kind of, we have to take a moment and maybe define and look at uh, how is it really that uh, these words are being spoken. And so I want to I want to set a, a, a basis for this idea of the brood of vipers and when he's calling uh, these people of this generation and, and the, the, the scribes and Pharisees, there's a couple different times uh, when this is used. 
We have Matthew 23, um, Matthew 23, 33. Um, you know, Messiah speaks of the, the brood of vipers. Um, then also in uh, 12, 34, which is what we just read, speaking as well of brood of vipers. Um, and this concept of being an offspring of vipers or being a, um, a, a brood uh, of the vipers, um, it ties perfectly in with this week's Torah portion in Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. Actually, verse we'll go back, verse 4, um, if you want to turn or swipe there with me. Um, it says, Then they set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient because of the journey. And I know for a fact, all of us struggle with patience and getting impatient with the journey along the way. And the journey presents us with different challenges and different circumstances. Um, and we've seen over and over and over again in these Torah portions that, that one of the main things um, that goes wrong uh, over and over and over again is uh, the lack of patience and then the sudden complaining and the mur murmuring and, the, and, and rising up against God and against leadership. And it always has negative circumstances, negative consequences. And I wish we would learn from these consequences, um, you know, because he, when you look at the, the, I mean, just last week's Torah portion, right? We're just looking at Korach and how did it start murmuring? It started with complaining, it started with the tongue. Um, and and you, you go, why do they continue to do the same thing over and over again? And he says, um, so they became impatient. He says, the people spoke against God and Moses. They said, why have you brought us up from Egypt to the die in the wilderness? For there was no food and no water, and we loathe this miserable food. So they said, there's no food and no water, but he says, we loathe this miserable food. So they had food, they just hated the food that they had. So the provision that they were receiving was not sufficient for them. Um, so it goes from having no food to just not having the right food that they wanted. And how many times do we do the exact same thing where we complain about things and the Lord is providing for us, he's taking us through a journey, and we complain about his provision and how he's taking us through the journey. So there's many, many lessons um, to learn about this. So then it says, uh, continues, it says, So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord. And you, intercede with the Lord that he may remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard. And it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he will live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a standard. And it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. That was such a fascinating um, portion and a fas such a uh, fascinating concept because Israel from the very beginning of their time, let, let, let's even digress to humanity from the beginning of time uh, has struggled with a particular animal and that animal is the serpent, right? From the very beginning, Adam and, and Chava, Adam and, and Eve, um, where was their struggle, right? Um, the serpent himself became a serpent. Why? Because he exalted himself. He, uh, Satan, uh, Hasatan, Lucifer, in the, the beginning before anything else, exalts himself in the heavens and tries to be likened unto God and says, look at me and look what I can do, um, and begins with the tongue. Very important thing, very important equation of the serpent itself is the tongue. Um, he raises himself up and says, uh, I can be just like God. And then he comes down and what does he say uh, to Eve, to Chava and to Adam? You can be just like God. You can make up your own rules. You can be equal to him. And they're bitten by the serpent at that moment. They're bitten by these, the, they're bit by these words that um, sunk into their heart and they believed for that moment and that venom that they were uh, bit uh, by or from that bite, um, the, that venom begins to permeate within them and starts to bring destruction into their life. Um, and, and, and this is a, a common theme. We see this serpent all through the scriptures and we see then, of course, Messiah. We see John, Matthew 3 and Messiah, Matthew 12 and, and, and uh, 23 and 
this concept of being a brood of vipers, of being an offspring of vipers, uh, of this bite, this venom, and what the bite means. And so in this week's Torah portion, um, you know, we see the people once again speaking, right? They're, they're murmuring. And he says, you want to feel the death of murmuring, the death of the life and death is in the power of the tongue. He said, he said, I sent these fiery serpents and they would bite these venomous serpents. And so the venom then bites them and it permeates them and it begins to create death and it causes many to die in that moment. Um, I think that it's, it's very interesting that then the cure is to look at a fiery serpent. The cure then is to raise this fiery serpent up on a standard uh, and, and each man that's bit by a serpent to cast his eyes, to focus his eyes uh, up on this serpent that's up on a standard high among the people. And so there's a whole uh, other teaching we could go into about what that serpent is, but I just want to get to the, the real basic root level of if we consider this concept of Eve uh, being bit by the serpent and the venom infecting her and causing the death and destruction of what existed in the garden at the very beginning. And if we go, if we fast forward to what was happening during Messiah's times and the Pharisees and the scribes. So if we take away the tone for a minute from when Messiah says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, and and you brood of vipers, rather than than, than listening to it and, and saying it, hearing it in in the tone of, of being harsh and judgmental, how about if we hear it through a lens of compassion and mercy for a minute? And him understanding that because they were they had been bitten by this venom that had infiltrated the Jewish people and infiltrated leadership and, and there was this corruption and that they had become uh, this brood of vipers. They had become this offspring of what had been sown into them from generation to generation that they, they're not able to see, they're not able to come in because they are a brood of vipers. And so if we remove for a minute this, this uh, what we hear when we say these words and we look at it through the, the idea that he had compassion on them because he recognized that it was as a result of the venom that they became who they were. And so though it doesn't take away, again, personal responsibility from them, he understands and sees why they're acting, how they're acting. Um, and I think this is a, an important perspective because when we consider this for a minute, um, we need to look at what's happening around us in the world and there's all these things going on and there's opinions and, and in this country uh, between the debates that are happening and there's just, there's a lot of pain and a lot of heartache being, uh, 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 you know, sent around or, or kicked around back and forth between people, even within our own body of Messiah, um, that people are saying things and taking opinions on things and taking stances and getting on their high horse on Facebook and, and making comments about things when what we should potentially do is all sides should take the moment to look at the venom that each and every one of us potentially could have been bitten by or so like each one of us has a serpent that we've been we've been bit by and that venom what is that venom that's been placed into us each side of the coin needs to to look at this and so knowing that many times people react or most times people react because of a hurt a pain a grief a disappointment an abuse something along the line in their life they see through this lens, they feel through this lens, this venom that's been injected into them at even an early age. I mean, look what happens in the Middle East when you see these videos from Iran and, and, and Iraq and Syria and many of these places where they take children from a very, very young age and they begin to train them and, and, and brainwash them into that violence is the only way and the children are beaten and, and, and they teach to beat others and they, they, they train them to annihilate you know, populations and to and, you know, the goal is to annihilate Israel and to fight and, and they breathe this into them at three, four, five years old. By the time they're eight, nine, ten, they're, they're basically trained assassins and, and they're like little machines out to, um, to, to carry out war. And you can see how they're just a result of the venom 
um, that has been injected into them by the bite of the serpent. And how many of us in one form or fashion have had venom injected into us and we don't even realize it. And so there's two sides to this coin is one, we um, need to look at the actions of people that are around us and like this, all of this stuff that's going on between the debates, between whether the shootings and the, and, and black lives matter. And if it's this group and if it's whites matter and blacks matter and Asians matter and cops, and we've got all these opinions and everyone's pointing at each other and everyone's, you know, spitting things at each other saying, well, it's you and it's you and it's you. And it's almost in the same context, the same, we're, we're saying it within the same, uh, uh, a tone maybe that we hear Messiah saying, you know, you brood of vipers and we're, we're really hard and, and not seeing the compassionate side of at all that he desired their repentance. He desired for them to understand it. And it was, could it be that he's saying it in a compassionate tone of what else do you have if this is all that you know? And I feel bad for you, you know, just like he did on the cross as he was being crucified. He didn't, as they're spitting at him and cursing him and everything else they're doing, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? They don't, they don't even realize what they're doing because they've been injected by this venom. And so how many of us can learn that when we see things and, and many times, I know it's, it, it's frustrating a lot of times and people a lot of times aren't taking responsibility for their actions and, and, and it's our job, whoever it is, to, to sit back, get off the high horse and let's try to work with people and have the same compassion and know that people do things and say things because there's a, a venom, because there's a bite that has occurred. On the flip side, though, however, look at what the solution was, right? So Moses, God tells Moses, raise up this banner, raise up this standard and, and make a fiery serpent out of it. So on the other hand of the equation, then, the answer to this is what is the serpent that they looked at, right? What is it that they had to face? What is it that they have had to put their eyes on? The very thing that was biting them, the very thing that was causing death was the very thing that they had to actually look up at. And so there's a very deep and profound teaching for us that we need to really, really learn is the personal responsibility connection is that each one of us needs to inspect our lives, our hearts. We need to inspect our tone, what we're saying, what we're putting on Facebook, and have we been injected with a venom? Have I been given something that just like the Pharisees were injected with a venom that was passed down potentially from generation to generation and that Messiah is saying, you poor Pharisees, you poor group of people. Can remember, not all were like this. And many came when they came in Matthew 3, you know, to, to John. And, and, and we have this, this story of, of, of them coming to, to the, the, the river to be immersed, to be baptized, or at least they were there. And he says, you know, you brood of vipers, repent, right? The goal was repentance. The goal was to be restored. And so each one of us need to look at the, the process, what the Messiah wants, what God wants for each and every one of us is to have restoration, is to have healing, is to suck that venom out of us. But we, the answer is we have to look at that serpent. Those we have to look at it and say, well, maybe what I'm saying, maybe what I'm writing, maybe the feelings that I have, maybe these things that I'm, I'm, I'm spouting off at the mouth is, maybe those things are, are coming from a root of a venom that has been injected into me that I'm not even addressing. And so in order for us to go through this healing process, we need to ensure that these, whether it be bitterness, whether it be hurt, whether it be pain, whether it be letdowns, disappointments, whatever it might be, these venoms many times are in us and we don't even realize it. And, and so it's the Lord is looking at us and sometimes people around us are able to point it out and we don't see it. So it's our job to be open to what the Lord wants to do in our lives. And if you truly want to be transformed, if you truly want to be healed, you have to open yourself up to actually look at 
the snake. You have to look at the banner, which is to confront your own fear, your own depression, your own weakness, your own laziness, uh, your own procrastination, uh, your own you know, inabilities, your, your, your own deficiencies. We have to confront those very things because those are the very things that are the venom that's killing us day in and day out. And until you actually confront it, until you actually look at it in the eyes, until you actually stare it right down, we're not able to be healed from these things that are holding us back. And these are the things that are killing us. And instead of doing so, and instead of being reconciled and being healed and being restored, instead we're looking at each other and we're pointing the finger. And we're making it a bit, it's a black issue, it's a white issue, it's a Hispanic issue, it's an immigration issue. We're, we're, we're giving, we're making opinions of things we have no, no clue about. We, we're not a, uh, a, taking for a moment to even really try to understand and put ourselves in someone else's shoes and have compassion on another person, on another being. And I'm all for doing things right. And I'm all for doing things, you know, legally and everything else, but it's not always so cut and dry. It's not always so easy. It's not always what you think it is looking at it from the other side of Facebook. Sometimes you have to take a moment and put yourself in compassion on the other side of the shoes and, and look at it from a different perspective from how our Messiah would look at it. And then on the flip side, we each have to, as we have compassion on each other, we each need to investigate each other. Remember, this isn't just a one-sided thing. This is each one of us need to do both sides of this. Each and every one of us need to inspect our own lives for the own, our own venom that's been injected into us or someone else's venom that's been injected to us by what? By the tongue. It's been spoken into our life. We need to remove and allow the Lord to remove those things. And then on the flip side, we need to look at others with compassion and mercy, with chesed, with achava, with love. So I pray that this blesses you. I pray that you continue to build the kingdom. Build the people up that are around you. Don't tear down. The enemy wants to destroy, kill, maim. Messiah desires, our Father in heaven desires for us to build, to bring light, to restore. I pray that you have a very blessed week. That you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Uh, and we'll see you in a future episode. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and use hashtag Torah Tuesday. Shalom. Wait, I forgot something. You got to add this back in. Can you add it back in? All right. So till the end of time from this tour portion till now, notice very important point is that the universal symbol for healthcare, universal symbol for medicine is what to this day? Banner serpents, right? Banner of serpents. It's healing starts from within. Healing starts with confronting and looking uh, our fears, looking our hurts, looking our illnesses in the face and dealing with it, not ignoring it, not pushing it aside. It's looking at it. There's no coincidence that this thing or wherever they're going to put it, the, the, the banner, the symbol for medicine is uh, exactly that. It is the banner from this week's Torah portion. It's the scene from this week's Torah portion uh, that to this day is a universal symbol of healthcare. The healing starts with looking that serpent in the eye. Shalom.